and welcome to the preview show as we look ahead to town's trip to Northampton this evening. I'm delighted to say that we're joined by former town and Northampton midfielder Paul Anderson. How are you doing, Paul? I'm very well. Yourself? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Enjoying coming out of lockdown? Uh, yeah, as you can see, I'm waiting for my haircut, which is this week. So, so <laughs> looking, forward, looking forward to that. But um, uh, again, it's, it's obviously been a tough time for everyone. Um, and hopefully it's the start of um, things opening up and going back to some sort of normality, should we yeah. say. So. Yeah. Your last spell as a, as a player was at Northampton, wasn't it? And yeah. what, what are you up to nowadays, Paul? Um, so I do have an agent working on my behalf um, who was trying to keep an eye out. Um, and obviously nothing came up, yeah. sort of has come up through the season. So January window, I gave that kind of my last bit of a go, I suppose, um, to, to stay in football and, or professional football. Um, I've had plenty of offers from part-time clubs um, and non-league clubs, um, but I, I wanted to stay in the league. And um, yeah, so that's just not, not came through with obviously the pandemic and me being 32, even though that's not old and I'm as fit as a fiddle, I'm fitter than anyone else who's out there um unfortunately nothing really came my way and obviously with the pay structure that came in as well um i think that sort of affected with fans not being in and uh, quite a lot of the income coming into the clubs is from fans and match days um, especially in league one league two um i think that kind of affected my my chances um so yeah so I'm, I'm right at the end of doing my ua for b uh, qualification for my coaching um i've set up my own coaching business which throughout lockdown i was doing loads and loads of one-to-one training which i was still allowed to do um so so yeah that's been going really well i've got um got a half term ca- camp coming up at the next half term um had a couple of offers to go and do some some coaching roles at, at clubs and stuff um, so yeah, so it's all been, it's all been relatively positive ever since January, and I kind of accepted that football is probably that's the end of professional football for me. Um, I, I made the choice to to really push towards my coaching. I don't want to leave the game, um, so I'm I'm looking forward to, as they say in football, going to the dark side. Um, so looking forward to starting my journey in coaching. Brilliant. Wish you all the best with that. Uh, Paul, Thank sounds you. like a really exciting adventure. Um, we're obviously here to talk about tonight's game, Town versus Northampton. Um, what have you seen of, of both sides this season, albeit I know we haven't had crowds and not many games have been on telly, but from what you've seen, what, what have you made of both sides? Again, um, obviously with the way it's been, we've not been able to go and watch games and I, I would have definitely have I would have definitely been to the Northampton games because it's 45 minutes away from me. Um, obviously, town are a bit further away. Um, I always try and follow as much as I possibly can. Um, with me not playing on Saturdays, I've watched a lot of sort of soccer Saturday. Um, I follow both the clubs on, on all social media sites. So... I try and keep up as much as I can. I've got friends in both camps. So I've tried to follow as much as possible. I think both clubs would probably say it's a disappointing season. Um, I think Northampton's targets will have been to try and avoid relegation, which is there's still a chance, but they're going to have to get some results in pretty quickly. Um, and with Town... Obviously, I think automatic promotion was probably the target um, with playoffs being the minimum requirement. Um, I know there's been changes and stuff. Um, and again, hopefully there's still that opportunity for town to end up in those top six, whether or not they will or not, I'm not sure. Um, but it's it leads for quite a big game tonight with both clubs needing the points, I suppose. Paul Cook will have wanted a reaction from his players after the disappointing 3-0 defeat at Wimbledon last Tuesday. And he said he got a reaction from his players and it was an improvement, a small step he described it as, albeit a 0-0 draw away at, at Charlton, but good to see a reaction from the players of some sort. Yeah, and look, when there's changes at the top, um, 
it's not always easy when a new manager comes in he'll have a different philosophy um he'll have different styles he'll fancy different players he's obviously not got the squad that he would want um obviously the marcus evans selling the club which sort of came out of nowhere even though it's been going on for years um there's quite a lot of there's a lot of things that have gone on and anytime i've been at a club and things happen above you um, it definitely affects performances on the, on the pitch. But again, there's always the odd game that's a disappointment. Throughout a season, you will have one or two games, which is a surprise. Obviously, Town won't have expected to lose to AFC Wimbledon. Um, they'll have been going in that thinking they would take all three points with, with good goal difference in the game, hoping to improve that for the playoff push. But sometimes these things happen. And... Uh, yeah, it's been unfortunate, but again, going away to Charlton is not an easy place to go, and uh, at whatever level and whatever division. Um, so, yeah, I think keeping a clean sheet, pushing, pushing, and again, I didn't get to see the game, but from what I hear, the manager was happy with how how the reaction was, and and at the end of the day, that's all you can ask of your players if if you if you have a bad game and it doesn't quite go right, how can you correct that and how can you react to it um, and make it, make it a positive result in your next game. And from, from what I've read, um, people were happy with the, with the performance and, and the reaction. Yeah. Although it was a, a better performance, it's still no goals in the last four games for town. I mean, you don't need to watch the games to know that that's a bit of an alarming statistic, isn't it? For a team who are trying to mount a playoff push, yeah, of, of course. And and look, they've got good strikers and good creativity at the club. Um, uh, again, uh, when things don't quite go right, um, I was at Forest for one of the seasons, and we had a great squad. And I think we went, I'm sure it was like ten games without scoring, which is ridiculous with the squad we had. Um, and sometimes, if you put the emphasis on that it seems to keep on happening and keep on happening. Look, when you go out and you play with freedom and there's no pressure on you because you're scoring loads of goals and you're winning loads of games, that's the easiest time to play. As soon as you sit there and you start having to analyse, well, why aren't we scoring? What's going wrong? And things like that, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a nice place to be as a player. Um, however, it's probably easier at the minute without fans there because you would get fans on your back. Um, but yeah, it, it, look, I'm going into the coaching side, and this will be this will be something that I'm sure will will happen to me at some point. And you have to start trying different things, and or sticking with you with your ways. It, it is until you're in that position and you're trying different things, you don't know how you're going to react to that. And obviously, that's the reason why managers are managers. Um, Paul Cook's got a decision to to make on how he's going to change that. Um, but again, coming to this stage of the season, both clubs are going to have to go for it because they both have to win, um, which will open up, open up chances at the other end. So it's um, saying that it'll end up being nil-nil. Um, but, but yeah, it, it's, it just is what it is. And, and unfortunately, sometimes you go through that bit of a sticky patch and, it only takes one good half or a good 10, 15 minute spell where you get a couple of goals and then all that pressure just disappears and, and you push on and you put and you progress from there. Northampton have scored the fewest, fewest goals in the league this season and I think town are twenty second, so we'll hope for that it's not a stalemate, Paul. Um but John Brady, who's who's staying on until the end of the season, he he seems to have come in and sort of steadied the ship a little bit. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I, th I think so. Look, obviously I worked under Keith Curl last season. Um, we had an amazing season getting promoted. The, we had a, I know there was a difficult start for the season, but then to get promoted and we had a very good squad. Um, and look, the pandemic hit as part of last season and moving into this season... I don't know their budgets. I don't know. I know they'll be one of the lower ones, I would imagine. Um, but a lot of that squad that helped that team get promoted 
weren't able to stay on, myself included. Um, when you had players like Vidane Oliver, who was probably the biggest threat for the club, and obviously he's gone on and he's smashing it at the minute at Gillingham. Um, you had Charlie Good, who was probably the rock at the back. And again, you look at the back three, really, that we had last season. There was um, Jordan Turnbull, Scott Wharton and Charlie Good. They've all left. And when everyone left, there was no centre-backs left at the club. So, again, I think there was always that expectation of Northampton probably being near the bottom. Um, it's... It's it's a it's a tough one because everyone has their budgets and everyone has their targets and like I say, Northampton's target was to steer clear of relegation and obviously John Brady's come in. I think he's done a fantastic job. Um, I've heard very good things from inside, not necessarily the changing rooms, but at the club. Um, and it's hopefully he can. Hopefully he can keep them in the league, um, but I also don't want it to be at Town's misfortune. Uh, it's a really tough game for me because I would love Ipswich to end up in the in the playoffs and get that promotion, but I would also love Northampton to steer clear of the, the relegation zone. So hopefully he will be the man to do it. And if he doesn't at Northampton this season, I'd like to see him get an opportunity to to get them to bounce straight back up next season. But Teddy Bishop was there. He had his sort of breakthrough season, didn't he, in the in the playoff yeah. campaign, which you played a big part in. Yeah. How did the player did you think Bish could have been? Well, he, he was can be those, Yeah, he was one of those that I think if he wouldn't have had his injury problems, I don't think he'd have still been at town. I think at his age at the time, um, there were clubs sniffing around him um, from Premier League, some of the big big teams. Um, I definitely think there will have been an opportunity for him to to maybe reach that level and see what it was like at the top. Um, but obviously, he's had the misfortune with injuries and things. But I still think when you watch him, the creativity and the spark that he brings to a team, he's that player that will break lines and make something happen for you. And if you've not scored in four games, he's the sort of player for me that, would be someone who would who would create something for you. You're going to be at the game tonight, aren't you, Paul? You're uh, working, you're on co-coms with, with Radio Suffolk's Brenna Woolley. Can I get a, uh, a score prediction for you? Oh, that's an unfair question, isn't it? <laughs> um, look, <laughs> I'm going to have to sit on the fence. On the fence. I, I would love... I would love both teams to be able to take three points from the game. And I know that's not possible. Um, there's five or six games left and I just hope they both hit the targets. Um, I haven't looked at the runnings, so I won't be able to then look at the following games. Um, if I'm honest, I think Town will win Ipswich. I think they will win. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm 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 being that boring, the boring middle guy who sits on the fence, unfortunately. Uh, and look, I, I, I'm hoping it's a good game. I'm hoping there's um, there's goals, um, which would be nice to see. Um, and and yeah, uh, whatever whatever is the best result for all all included involved would be nice. Thanks for your time on the on the preview, Paul. It's really appreciate it. We've just got a, a couple of fan questions, if you don't mind, if I put those to you. Um, so the first one is from George and just says, that goal that you scored in the playoffs against Norwich, was that the best feeling you've had from scoring a goal, simply? Yeah, I think I've, I've had two in my career, which I always speak about. That's one, and scoring against Leicester for Forest was the other one. Um, just because, look... The the one against Norwich, look, it's not the best goal he'll ever going to score, but I hadn't played too much leading up to the game. Um, I felt I'd done really well that season and I, I was disappointed not to be involved more coming to the end of the season. Um, to come on, obviously, again, using the word a few times, but the misfortune to Luke Varney, who 
had done his Achilles. Uh, it was just one of those that dis- disappointment turned into elation for me in the space of 15 minutes or so. Um, and uh, I always know, look, if my career is done and this is the, this is the end of my playing days, I have never heard anything like the celebration, the noise that came from the celebration after scoring that goal. Um, it's a little bit of a blur. The celebration beyond, we were, all went a bit mad and I'm sure people did in the crowd. Um, but it's definitely something that I will always look back on to be extremely proud of, to give us, look, it didn't end up well with the second leg, but it gave us that opportunity and I still think to this day, up until the second half of the second leg, I feel like we were on top and just with the way it happened and obviously Christoph Berra's handball and sending off, um, I, I still believe up to that point we were, we were, the, were the team who were looking like we were going to go and win it. And um, yeah, but unfortunately it didn't end well, um, but it is something that will stay with me for, for the rest of my life and um, it's an extremely important part of my playing career. Uh, next question is from uh, Sarah, who asks, how do you look back at your time at Ipswich? Um, probably my two most favourite seasons um, in football. I know I had very positive seasons at Forest, where look, I love Forest, it's a great club, and we had two playoff seasons, but I was a young lad, uh, maybe didn't appreciate everything that was around me and wasn't necessarily comfortable in my own skin as a person. Um, when I came to, to town, I was, what was I, 25, 26. Um, I was far more comfortable as a person in myself. I was happy with the way I played, um, I was comfortable with who I was. The changing room was the best changing room I've ever been in. I think Mick McCarthy created a fantastic environment to be working in. Um, and I really enjoyed those times and I'd have loved for it to have carried on. Um, I, I didn't want to leave the club. Um, I'd have loved to have still been there now and I would love to have still have had the opportunity. And that's despite speaking to Paul Lambert, offering my services for nothing, but he wasn't willing to, to take that. So I would have done anything for that club. And uh, I hope that people remember me for that. And I gave absolutely 100% in that shirt. And it's the one place that I would have loved, whether it was to play for town or for someone else, it's the one place I would love to go back to and play at, obviously preferably for town, um, but Portman Road, I have a real special memory there, mainly probably for that goal. Um, but it, it is somewhere that I hold in high regard, really, and, and it's a place that I'll never forget, and hopefully I can come back there, probably not as a player now, but whether it's coaching, um, in, in whatever way, I would love to be able to give back to that club, and I would always give 100% for them. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate your time on, on the preview, Paul. And uh, I look forward to seeing you later on at, at Six Fields. Um, we wish you all the best with your future coaching endeavours or whether you end up going back to play. And I'm sure you've still got a lot to offer to many a club at, at the age of 32. But um, yeah, we wish you all the best um, with whatever's next for you. And uh, town fans, thank you very much for watching at home. Don't forget that you can still buy your I follow match passes on the club website for £10 this evening. Thank you very much.